A while back I bought this LED light on eBay and it was quite cheap and I wanted to see what sort of quality it was. And the first surprise was that it was tiny, it was minute. And I, I quite liked it actually. And it contained a 10 watt LED but it used a 3 watt driver to drive it. This typical 3 watt driver you'd find in a GU10 light, um, which puts out around about 9 to 12 volts. It's designed for uh, 3 LEDs in series, 3 1 watt LEDs. But in this case, the typical 10 watt LED has the 3 LEDs in series times 3 in parallel. So it drives them fine. And it, I guess most people would buy it, they'd, they'd think they were getting a 10 watt light, they'd plug it in, it'd be very bright and they'd be happy. However, recently, I, uh, well, just within the last few days, I received these. Uh, and uh, I got two of them. And these were from a seller called HID Top, and they're the same style of lights, but the price was £2.89 each. I think I paid a bit less than that, because I see they've updated the listing since. And I thought, well, something's got to give when the price is going that low for shipping something from China, or maybe it's just mass production. So, it's arrived. Let's uh, take a look at it. Comes a bit of foam in the front. Let's compare. It looks fairly similar. A rougher finish, I'd say, than the this one. They've taken the cable, they've allowed for a cable gland at the bottom and at the back. That might be so they can add the... I've had similar ones that had the little passive infrared sensor in the bottom here. So let's uh, check and see if it's earth first. That's usually a good good thing to do. So I'll put this to continuity. And I'll stick one lead on the earth wire. See if we can get a good connection here. We've not bared the end as much. It's the usual very short lead. And the other one, nope, I keep slipping off that because it's tiny. And the other one. So, yes, uh, sorry for uh, those of you who were, who were hearing head wearing headphones, that's uh, quite loud. But yes, it does appear to be earthed. So let's uh, strip these wires a bit more and we'll do a power test. And I'm actually, although it says it's 3 watt, I'm expecting it to be, uh, should I say, although it says it's 10 watt, I'm expecting it to be 3 watt. Now, before anybody asks, this is a quick test. It's a, a quick connection test, or it's used in workshops. Uh, kind of harder to find these days, but you can still get them. Used to be very popular, but uh, they were they ended up being a bit frowned upon from a safety aspect because you ended up with garages and workshops just plugging lots of things into them. Uh, you know, like twisting lots of instead of getting power plugs for their power tools, they just had bare ends in the power tools and they'd twist them in bunches and shove them into these. So they kind of lost favour that way. Um, because they were just a, people inevitably just shoved the earth wire, they got them mixed up because they were all covered in grease and dirt and shoved the earth into the live and then all the power tools were live and stuff like that. So there were quite a few accidents with them and then they sort of became less popular. So let's see how this fares. It's lit up and the power is actually 8.4 watts. It does appear to be driving it at almost 10 watts and that is quite bright I have to say. I wonder how hot it'll get at that. So, let's open it up. That's a surprise. That is that's a real, real surprise. I really was expecting that to be a, point, uh, a 3 watt driver. So let's uh, get the lid off this. I will say that the moulding of the lid is just a little bit more... It's a bit rougher looking than the... Other one, the other one's quite a sort of clean finish. This one's slightly more sort of rippled, if you will. So here we go, the usual layer of glass, and then, yep, quite a largish power supply in here. Uh, there's two bits of broken glass that's probably off the cover here, that's not that uncommon. Two screws that are holding the reflector. I don't know if the other one had the two screws or it was. Usually there are two diagonal screws in the other lights. So yes, 
the power supply is glued in, as so many of them are. It just, it's got four screws holding it down, so to all intents and purposes, oh dear. Is that, that wasn't even underneath that screw, they were just kidding themselves. That must have been luck that that was actually making a connection to the side. No, oh, they lose points for that, but not as many points as the people that just actually cut the wire off and took it out of the way. At least it's a, uh, at least you can do something about that, that one there. So that's a... Uh, the power supply, oh, the power supply does have a label, but the label is now stuck to the hot melt glue. That's a bit disappointing. Uh, so I won't be able to actually tell its power rating, because the chance of me getting that label off are extremely remote. Let's give it a little go. No, that's a paper label, I'm pretty sure, and it's just going to tear. I could use the hot air gun to get it off, but you know what? We kind of know that it's the best part of a little 10 watt power supply anyway. So yeah, the only improvement this needs is for that wire. Oh, the crimps just pulled right off. I, I was using unreasonable pressure, pressure, but uh, yes, the, the the earthing is as always the little bugbear in this. But other than that, uh, I'd say that that's staggering that for less than three pounds, you get what is quite a useful little starter at least for a light. Oh, let's, uh, let's do the test in the LED. Let's run it at very low current and we'll see how that fares. So I'm just going to turn the power supply on here. The inverter won't really, the driver won't mind uh, voltage being applied externally, probably, uh, because uh, it usually has a capacitor and output and direct fire diode, so it won't mind uh, external voltage being applied. So I'll start off low. Let's uh, stick that on there, and I'll put a current limited supply, but I'll just tweak it up gently. Try and get a connection there without shorting onto the base. So, turning the voltage up here. Radio, that's me at 12 volts. Is that running at 27 volts? Is that one of the higher voltage? Let's say I plug that in and stick the meter across that, in fact. So I won't bother connecting the earth since it's floating in the air anyway. And we'll power this up and I'll stick the voltage tester across it. Here's the meter, which... Uh, We'll probably swamped out to a degree by the... So let's uh, put that to volts DC and then try, it's quite bright, I'm looking directly into the light here. Oh, that's a full 31 volts across that. That, Ellie, that is like the nine chips in that are actually in series. That's surprising. That's very surprising. So, okay, let's uh, get my uh, meter on here again, and I'll set it to the point at which I can make those lights light, and we'll uh, try and exceed the voltage to actually get them to start glowing and see how leaky they are, as is sometimes the case. So, uh, they're all lighting absolutely evenly at low level. I don't know if you're going to see this. They're all coming on perfectly, no leaky chips. So there we have a cheap sub three pound fixture. That's uh, about $4.50 in American currency. Complete housing, seal, LED, driver, and it seems to be a relatively good LED for for that low price, that's quite surprising really. That is really surprising. I think these things are cute, these tiny little lights. They're really neat. Uh, there's where the glasses come from. The, they tend to chip them off and, uh, at the edge here. It tends to be quite rough and it's not uncommon to find a little bit of glass inside, but uh, it's no great deal. Yeah, that that's that's very impressive. That has surprised me greatly. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, definite winner. I've opened the other one because I bought two of these. I bought one cold white and one warm white, same the, the same price. And I noticed on opening this one that both of them showed an earth connection, but uh, when you opened it up, the lug is loose. And they've just 
basically sat it, it's just loose between the reflector and the casing, it's not pinched in any way. And the only way I can think they didn't just finish the job is because maybe the earth wire didn't quite reach that terminal. Uh, or not terminal, the screw for the reflector, or maybe they just uh, thought it was going to take too much time to try and pinch it under that screw. But strangely, if you actually take these off, there's two extra holes here and here that are actually drilled and tapped for an M3 screw. So if that wire just been a bit longer, and it may just be that they, they didn't do that because it just isn't quite long enough to get to either of those, then if it had been that bit longer, they could have um, just uh, tucked it under there. And, you know, at worst case, when you've got the such a short flex, if I drag this, oh, and the lugs come off again, which isn't really a surprise, you can sometimes drag a core through. I wouldn't re really recommend that as normal practice. But, uh, so I'm going to uh, probably uh, solder that. I'm probably going to drag that core through, which I just recommend against. Um, or change the flex completely. Uh, solder the lug and stick it on there so it is properly earthed. I did, uh, with the other one, I did use the heat gun to get the label out of it. <coughs> and it says, in perfect English, LED driver model RJ10 watt. Um, input 100 to 240 volts AC, 50 60 hertz. Output 28 to 39 volts DC, 300 milliamp plus or minus 5%. Power factor greater than or equal to 0.5, which is terrible power factor. But uh, just a typical little 10 watt driver uh, for the the uh, uh, for driving all those LEDs in series. So um, they're actually nice little lights. I wonder how good they'll be at actually dissipating that amount of heat from that reflector 10 watts. But um, having said that, 10 watts isn't massive. So um, yes, they're they're actually quite cute little lights.